Dear students, now we are going to derive the field expressions for transverse electric waves guided by this parallel planes. So simply TE waves between parallel planes. Let's start with the definition of TE waves. TE waves are the waves in which the electric field strength is entirely transverse in the direction of propagation. For example, we can consider the wave is propagating in the z direction. Then, so there is no electric field in the direction of propagation that is E z is equal to 0. So here the electric field is entirely transversed in the direction of propagation. But it has the electric field in the other directions like E y. Okay, but not E z. So here it has only this H z component in the direction of propagation. T e waves are also known as H waves. Do you all understand this one? So next we are going to derive the field components of this T e waves. So for that we can take the general field components of incident wave along the parallel plane. So we have already derived the general equations for this field components in the previous lecture video, correct? So we can take the general expressions directly from that derivation. So you have to remember this four field components E x is equal to minus gamma by h squared dou E z by dou x. H x is equal to minus gamma by h squared dou h z by dou x. E y is equal to j omega mu by h squared dou h z by dou x. H y is equal to minus j omega epsilon by h squared dou e z by dou x. So, this all are the four field components in general. But for this T e waves, here e z is equal to 0. Correct? So, e z is equal to 0 means here this term e x becomes 0 and also h y term becomes 0. Correct? Because here dou e z, here is also dou e z. Then we can get E x is equal to 0, H y is equal to 0, but H z is not equal to 0. Do you all understand this one? The remaining field components are E y and H x. So we are going to derive the field components H z, E y, H x. Do you all understand this one? So in this T e waves, we can consider this E y as the first expression, H x as the second equation. Okay. This is the diagram to represent the T e waves propagating in the z direction between two parallel planes. So here the field components are E y, H z and H x. The distance between two parallel planes is given as A. So it starts from minus A by 2 plus A by 2. Okay. So here in order to find out the field components of TE waves, we can consider the general wave equation of electromagnetic wave. So here the general wave equation is del squared E is equal to gamma squared E. So here del squared is nothing but Laplacian operator. It can be represented as dou squared by dou x squared plus dou squared by dou y squared plus dou squared by dou z squared. So here we can replace this del squared as dou squared e by dou x squared plus dou squared e by dou y squared plus dou squared e by dou z squared is equal to gamma squared e. So here we are having only the component e y. So we can replace this e in terms of e y. So here dou squared e y by dou x squared plus dou squared e y by dou y squared. So in this y direction there is no e y component but in the z direction it is having e y but in this particular y direction there is no e y component so that term becomes 0. So here dou squared e y by dou e z squared that is equal to gamma can be written as minus omega squared mu epsilon e y because Gamma is equal to square root of sigma plus j omega epsilon into j omega mu. So in this parallel planes, here the sigma value is 0. Okay, then we can write 
gamma squared as minus omega squared mu epsilon then here E as EY. In the next step we can write this EY term okay in terms of Z okay. So here in general the EY term is equal to the magnitude along with its direction. So E naught is the magnitude of this EY component here e power minus gamma z is the, the propagation constant in the particular direction. Okay, that is including the phase. So, magnitude along with the phase that is ey. So, here we can consider only this ey component for this z direction. So, we can keep this dou squared ey by dou x squared as such. Okay, so next we are going to differentiate this term with, with respect to z. Here we are using second order differentiation. So here dou squared by dou z squared of e power minus gamma z is equal to gamma squared e power minus gamma z. For the first time differentiation we can get minus gamma e power minus gamma z. If you are going to differentiate again we can get minus gamma into minus gamma again e power minus gamma z. Then this term can be written as gamma squared. So next we are going to move this term to this side as plus. Then EY is common for these two terms. Then we can write dou squared EY by dou x squared plus gamma squared plus omega squared mu epsilon into EY is equal to 0. So we can consider this term as H squared. So H squared is equal to gamma squared plus omega squared mu epsilon. So the wave equation for this TE waves can be written as dou squared ey by dou x squared plus h squared ey is equal to 0. So this is the wave equation for this TE waves. So it is the second order differential equation. If we are going to solve this equation, we can get the value as the constant c1 sin hx plus c2 cos hx. Okay, so that is the solution for this wave equation. Okay. Then the solution of the second order equation is EY is equal to C1 sin HX plus C2 cos HX. Consider this as the third equation. So in this one, C1 and C2 are the arbitrary constants. We are going to find out the C1 and C2 by using the boundary conditions. Okay, so we are going to derive the EY field component from this third expression. Do you all understand this one? So here in order to find out this arbitrary constants we can use the boundary conditions of the electric field. So here the first boundary condition is what? The tangential component of electric field is zero at the surface of the conducting plane. Correct? So surface of the conducting plane means here the surface area starts from x is equal to zero to x is equal to a because the distance between these two parallel planes is a. So here ey is equal to 0 at x is equal to 0, ey is equal to 0 at x is equal to a. So first we are going to apply this condition in the third equation. So here we can get ey is equal to c1 sin hx. Actually here it is hx, x is equal to 0. So sine of 0 plus c2 cos of 0 that is equal to 0. So when x is equal to 0, ey is equal to 0. So from this sine 0 is 0, cos 0 is 1. So we can get c2 is equal to 0. Then we have to substitute the c2 value in this third equation. So what is third equation? That is ey is equal to c1 sin hx plus c2 cos hx. Here C2 is 0. So we can ignore the term. We can get only EY is equal to C1 sin HX. Okay. Then we are going to substitute the next condition. EY is equal to 0 at X is equal to A in the above equation. Okay. So here C1 sin HA. X becomes A that is equal to 0. So when X is equal to A, EY becomes 0. 0. Then we can move the C1 to this side. 0 by C1 is 0. Then we can move this sign to this side as sine inverse. So HA is equal to sine inverse of 0. 
sin inverse of 0 means when the sin value becomes 0. So, whenever the pi value is coming. Okay. So, here sin pi, sin 2 pi, sin 3 pi, sin 4 pi. So, all these pi values are 0. So, we can write the sin inverse of 0 is equal to m pi. Where m is the integer, its value can be 1, 2, 3, 4 up to infinite. Okay. So, from this we can write h is equal to m pi. From this we can get the value of h is equal to m pi by a. Do you all understand this one? In the next step, we are going to substitute c2 is equal to 0 and h is equal to m by by a in the equation 3. Then we can get the ey component as c1 sin m by by a x. So this is the magnitude value. We have to include the magnitude along with the phase. So here the ey field component for te waves is given as c1 sin m by by a x e power minus gamma z. So it represents the propagation value in that particular direction. Okay. So magnitude along with the phase. So consider this is the fourth equation. So this is the first field component of this TE waves. So next we are going to find out the HZ component. So for that we can consider the first equation. So what is the first equation? EY is equal to J omega mu by H squared dou HZ by dou X. So we are going to find out HZ value. For that we can keep this value and move this term to the other side as a reciprocal. Then we can get dou HZ by dou X is equal to EY multiplied with H squared by J omega mu. Correct? Then we are going to substitute the values of EY and h squared in this one. So ey from fourth expression that is c1 sin m by by ax e power minus gamma z into here h value is what m by pi a the whole squared by j omega mu. So next we are going to integrate both the sides to get the hz component. So if we are going to integrate on this left hand side we can get hz value that is equal to integration of the c1 sin m by by a x e power minus gamma z the same by by a the whole squared by j omega mu dx. So here we are going to integrate with respect to x. So we have to take all other terms as a common one from this integration. Then this term can be written as c1 m by by a the whole squared by j omega mu e power minus gamma z integration of sin m by by a x into dx. So what is the integration of sin? It is nothing but minus cos. So here we are having the value m by by a along with this x. So this integration can be written as minus cos of this value divided by m by by a. Okay. So here we can get c1 by j omega mu m by by a the whole squared e power minus gamma z integration of sin s minus cos m by by a x by m by by a. Then we can simplify this expression. We can get the answer as hz is equal to minus c1 by j omega mu m by by a e power minus gamma z cos of m by by a x. Do you all understand this one? This is the fifth equation that is the hz field equation of this TE waves between parallel planes. Okay. So the last one is HX. So here we are going to find out the head using the second equation. So what is second equation? HX is equal to minus gamma by H squared dou HZ by dou X. So in this one we are going to substitute the fifth equation that is HZ value and H is equal to M by by A. Then this expression can be written as hx is equal to minus gamma by m by by a the whole square dou by dou x of this hz can be written as minus c1 j omega mu m by by a e power minus gamma z cos m by by a x. Okay. So here we are going to differentiate with respect to x. So we can take all other terms as a constant from this expression. 
So we can write minus gamma by m by by a the whole square into minus c1 by j omega mu. So minus into minus plus. So we can take this term outside. So c1 by j omega mu into gamma by m by by a the whole square. Here one more m by by term is there. So m by by a outside e power minus gamma is there. Dou by dou x of cos m by by a x. Okay. So in this one we can simply divide these two values. Next we are going to differentiate this cos value. That is nothing but differentiation of cos is minus sign m by by a x multiplied with m by by a because we are differentiating that value here then we can simplify this terms further to get hx value so here hx is equal to minus into plus minus so minus c1 by j omega mu gamma e power minus gamma z sin m by by a x so this is the sixth equation that is the hx component of this te waves do you all understand this one in the next step we can consider the propagation constant gamma as alpha plus j beta so here we can assume that attenuation constant value as zero if attenuation constant is zero then the gamma becomes j beta that is the imaginary value so phase shift constant is very important in wave propagation so we have to ensure that the gamma value is always imaginary one for wave propagation okay so here we can assume alpha is equal to zero then gamma is equal to j beta then the field equations of te waves between parallel planes can be written as ey is equal to c1 sin m by by ax e power minus gamma z so this gamma is replaced with the value j beta Okay, similarly, hx is equal to, actually it is gamma by j omega mu. So, gamma is nothing but j beta divided by j omega mu, j j cancel. Then we can write minus beta by omega mu c1 sine of m by by a x e power minus j beta z. Then, hz is equal to minus c1 by j omega mu m by by a cos m by by a x e power minus j beta z. So, these three expressions are very important to analyze the TE waves between parallel planes. Okay. Then the last one, the dominant mode of TE waves between parallel planes. So, here we can consider the dominant mode as TE10 mode. So, let's discuss what is mean by dominant mode. So, here we are having the integer value m. So, each value of m specifies a particular mode of propagation. So, here the mode of propagation can be represented as Te MO mode. Okay, so m is the integer value. Here the second term O represents the variation of fields with respect to y direction. So, it can be represented as simply 0. Okay, so if m is equal to 0, that is the lowest value, right? So, if m is equal to 0, what will happen? All these three field components become 0. Because sin 0 is 0, here sin 0 is 0, here cos 0 is 1, but outside we are having this m value. So, this hz is also 0. Correct. So, if m is equal to 0, all the field components become 0. So, it is not a valid condition. So, we can start from m is equal to 1. Then the lowest value of m is 1 then this mode is known as lowest order mode so the lowest order mode is called as the dominant mode then te10 is the dominant mode of te waves do you all understand this one